These are goalkeeper training goggles and they're supposed to improve your reactions. Oh. So over the past week, me and my friend Sean tested out the biggest goalkeeper hacks to see if any of them actually work. Oh. All right, Sean, so the first goalkeeper hack we're testing out today are finger saves. And finger saves are plastic spines that fit inside goalkeeper gloves that apparently give keepers more protection and strength compared to regular gloves. Uh, I've never really used them, so I'll give them a try. Let's test them out. First up, I took all the finger saves out of Sean's gloves to see how he performed without any assistance. And after putting the gloves on, it was time to test them out. But even without any assist from the finger saves, Sean wasn't having any problems saving my shots. Now, we're gonna put the finger saves in. After the first test, I put all the finger saves inside the gloves to see if the spines gave Sean any advantage. But even though Sean was making some great saves, it didn't seem they gave him any help. You know when you go bowling and you use like the guardrails and you get a strike? It doesn't feel as good. Wearing these is like that. It's so much nicer without the safety measure in place. I just prefer without. Next up, we have this, which is glove cleaner. All right, Sean, so if we watch this video, this product is meant to make your old gloves look brand new. What do you think? Uh, well, these gloves are properly gone, so it'll really put it to the test, I think. Let's give it a try. You ready? Let's see. And after I applied the glove cleaner to Sean's gloves, the results were showing up quickly. It's better than I thought. I think this is actually working. Palms are much wider. That was pretty good. It is a, a much bigger improvement than I would have thought. So this next hack is probably the most ridiculous hack we're gonna test today. So two years ago, Icelandic goalkeeper Patrick Gunnarsson was caught making his goal smaller while playing for Norwegian team Viking FK. So at every home game, Gunnarsson would wait for the referee to make his final checks before kickoff and then pull the goalposts inwards, apparently reducing the goal size by 15 to 20 centimeters. What do you think, Sean? If it makes it smaller, like I mean, a few inches makes all the difference. Well, so first of all, I'm gonna take 10 shots against the regular goals before we move the posts in. And with my first attempt, I hit a shot that just skimmed the post. Maybe if the posts were moved in, it would have hit it. The truth was, we weren't gonna see that much difference with shots going near the center of the goal. Oh. Disgusting! But a couple of shots near the corners were sneaking in during the first test. Some of them are creeping in at the minute. And where we were gonna notice this hack's effect the most was with shots that could be turned onto the post and also strikes that hit the post and went in. Now it's time to move the posts in. And after pushing the goal posts in, it was actually crazy to see just how much smaller they got. And the new goals were easily a few inches smaller. Even just standing here right now looking at the goals, they do look a lot smaller. But even though the difference in size was crazy, it also seemed to make Sean a little more confident in goal. Oh. I feel like there's less room to cover. It is more mental because it isn't much, but it, it does feel more snug. So with the goals moved in a couple inches, it had me questioning where a lot of my shots would have previously ended up. That probably would have hit the post. Oh, I think in the original goals, that might have gone in. And this hack also seemed to make pushing things wide a bit easier for Sean. It is only a few inches, so obviously it's not gonna like completely change it. Mentally, I feel bigger and it's easier to palm things wide. Even though this hack is probably very illegal, it definitely makes a difference. And as well as giving Sean a mental advantage, this hack can also be the difference from a shot hitting the post and going wide or going in. So while you might have to do this one at your own risk, it does actually work. So the next hack is a bit of a controversial one, but there are some people who say that goalkeepers should stand in the middle of the goal for free kicks, because apparently they're easier to save. So the main idea of this hack is that Sean covers more area in the goal by standing in the middle than on one side, making it easier for him to save shots curled around the wall. I don't like it. The wall should defend its side. I got my side. It's just a system that works. Let's test it out. So first up, Sean is going to face five free kicks standing on one side of the wall before he moves to the middle to see if this is a hack or just a myth. And after setting up his wall, it was time for the first attempt. But to make this hack even more exciting, it's time to tell you about today's sponsor, Top 11. <sighs> Oh my days. I don't know if Sean even stood a chance for that first one. Top 11 is a free to play football management game that you can play on your phone. 
<gasps> oh. Maybe if he was in the middle of the goal, he might have saved that one. The brand new version of the game comes with all new features including updates to the game's 3D live matches, cutscenes and player features. And three attempts in, it seemed like if Sean was in the middle of the goal, he'd have more chance of reaching my shots. Oh. Top 11 2025 comes with brand new competitions just like the real life football world with all new leagues and knockout stages. So for this next shot, I'm gonna try and catch Sean off guard and curl one into the top right corner. I guess that's the benefit of putting Sean on that side of the goal, he has that side covered. On Top 11 2025, you can manage your own football team and play against managers around the world. Oh, Maybe Sean wasn't in the middle of the goal there, but he definitely got across to it. So after the first test, it definitely seemed some shots were out of reach for Sean when he was standing on the far side of the goal. But now I was gonna take five shots with him standing in the middle of the goal to see if he could save my free kicks any easier. The one thing I would say is, while there's not as much room on the left side of the goal anymore, there's definitely more on the right side. And I put the new area to shoot at to the test right away. <sighs> oh, he got across to it, but it seemed like a lot more effort. So if you want to check out Top 11 2025 special launch season, which includes giveaways and rewards, be sure to check it out using the link in my description. <sighs> He's saving these, but it's just so much more effort. And it was also much easier to catch Sean off guard with him not knowing which way I was shooting. Oh, I guess that's the thing about Sean being in the middle. It's just a lot easier to wrong foot him when he's there. <sighs> he got lucky there. When you're standing in the middle of the goal, it's a lot harder to see the ball when it goes on this side. You're seeing it much later as it gets over the wall, not as it's kicked. <sighs> oh, I think it's easier for Sean to reach the left side of the goal but it's just so much easier to catch him off guard on the right side. So while Sean might have found reaching shots curled around the wall easier to get to, this method just put a whole lot more responsibility on him. Okay, Sean, you faced five shots standing on the right side of the goal and five in the middle. I think overall you covered more of the goal standing in the middle, but it was just so much easier to catch you off guard. Yeah, it's a lot more work trying to peer around the wall, trying to cover both sides properly. Just leave one side to your wall. So the next hack we're testing out is different types of glove glue and for those of you that don't know, glove glue is a spray you can add to your gloves that increases your grip. But which one is best? So for this hack, I'm gonna be applying three different types of grip sprays to Sean's gloves. And the sprays with the most grip should be able to help Sean pick the ball off the ground with just one hand. So first up, we have the Roish grip spray. Ooh. But Sean and I were having doubts about this product already. Doesn't seem that sticky. No, not what you'd expect. But after leaving it dry for a couple minutes, Sean tried out the Royce spray. Give it your best shot, Sean. Yeah, that just didn't work. On to the next. So next up, we have Turbo Glue, and I'm expecting big things from this one. You could not put Turbo on a product, that it'd be terrible. Well, I guess we're about to find out. So Sean swapped out his gloves for a clean pair before I sprayed them with the Turbo Glue. <laughs> this one's got a good spray to it. The spray part is terrible, but is the grip part? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> and after also leaving this product to dry, we put this spray to the test. If Turbo Glue lets me down, I have no more faith in anything. That was terrible. I've lost all my faith. So finally, we have the OG glove glue, and this is our final hope. So with one last product to try out, it wasn't looking like grip sprays were that effective at all. But this time, things seemed a lot more promising after applying the glove glue. Ooh, that one sounds the best. It's got the most stick to it. Turbo glue hurt me. Can glove glue heal me? It actually were. I am healed. So the next hack we have are these reaction goggles. So for the past year, Manuel Neuer has been wearing these pretty strange looking goggles while training for Bayern Munich. And while these might look pretty strange, Neuer actually has a pretty special reason for wearing them. So these things are actually called swivel vision goggles and are supposed to help your reactions because of how much more you have to focus while wearing them. So Sean, do you want to try them out? Uh, yeah. And after reluctantly trying these things on, Sean now looked like the worst superhero ever. But his vision also went from something like this to this. Now though, it was time for Sean to face his first test in the goggles. So for this first test, we're just gonna take 10 shots on Sean to see how he deals with wearing these goggles. You look amazing. I can't see either post. But even with my first shot, 
It looked like Sean was gonna struggle. I don't think he can see. It's very hard to do with like moving balls because it moves in and out of what you can see. So anything inside Sean's main line of vision was easily dealt with. But any shots that drifted into his peripheral vision that was blocked by the goggles seemed to get lost on him. I'm definitely having to scan way more with these goggles and I feel over time that would definitely build spatial awareness. But when it comes to long shots, I just can't track them without my peripheral vision. That's super focus. <laughs> From now. This man oozes aura right now. John, do you actually think it's working or is it just making your vision worse? I think it's just really disorientating. I don't think it's helping me at all. It's just making it very awkward. The goggles only appeared to be making Sean's job and goal even tougher. <laughs> you kind of put your hands in an area. You don't really like meet the ball. You just block. And while they were meant to help him focus more, they were just stopping him from seeing the ball's full movement in the air. So for the first test, I think Sean actually really struggled. Do you think it improved your focus? I think it just made me really bad. So with the goggles failing the long shot test, it was becoming a bit of a mystery why Neuer wore these things in the first place. But Sean and I still had two more tests to put these goggles through before seeing if they're actually worth using. And next up was the 1v1 test. So for this next test, I'm going to be taking Sean on in 10 one-on-ones to see if these goggles help improve his short-range reactions. But it seemed like it was going to be the same story for these goggles on this test too. It's too easy with these goggles. And after beating Sean five times on my first six attempts, these goggles were just making him worse. Eventually though, Sean was getting better at dealing with my one-on-ones from close range. Oh my days, man. And he stopped me scoring on my last four attempts, with his focus looking like it was improving towards the end of the test. For one-on-ones, I find these way more effective. I think in close range, nothing's outside of your peripheral vision, so you get laser focus. So even though Sean had a tough time with the goggles at the start of this test, I do feel like laser focus. The narrower vision helped him to focus more as he adapted to the goggles towards the end of the 1v1 drill. So with the goggles passing the close range test, it was time to put these things through the final drill. But to see if these goggles are really that effective, we would be putting them through the ultimate reaction test. And after placing obstacles in front of Sean in goal, it made the perfect deflector to bounce footballs off of to see if Sean could deal with split-second reactions. And Sean dealt with the first deflections really well. So by the end of the test, the smaller focus range did appear to help Sean with the reaction drill. Save. I feel over the last two tests, these goggles have been way more effective. Long range shots have way too much crazy movement. They really are just designed for close range reaction stuff. Oh, that's it. And with the goggles passing the last test, it was time to finally review these things. I think these goggles mainly train spatial awareness. As a goalkeeper for long range shots, you really do need your peripheral vision. But for the close range stuff, the laser focus these goggles gave was really good. Do I like the goggles? Overall, meh. So Sean, next up is a pretty simple hack, but apparently if you put your knee behind your hands before picking up the ball, you can stop any mistakes where the ball might go through your legs. Guess I'd need to make a mistake for that. So to test out this hack, I'm going to be taking five low driven shots at Sean where he first uses his regular scoop pickup before we switch to the knee behind pickup to see if this method is actually more secure. Funnily enough though, Sean dealt with the first low driven shots using the scoop pickup without any problems, and there didn't seem to be any issue of the ball slipping between his legs. Next up, we're taking five shots where Sean is gonna be using the knee behind method. And while this method initially seemed a bit more secure, we came across a major issue with this pickup. And with the next two shots taking a deflection, it looked like this method actually had a massive problem. <sighs> That is partly why I don't like the knee down. You get down and then if you're standing for that, you can just react. But when you put your knee down, it takes a deflection. You've, you've committed, you're out of the game. Uh, I personally don't like this technique. I think you commit too much and if anything goes wrong, you can't really recover. So after testing out both pickup methods, we found out that while you might run the risk of letting the ball slip between your legs with the scoop pickup, the loss of mobility with the knee behind pickup actually creates a much bigger problem if the ball takes a deflection. So overall, which one would you say is best? I just think the scoop is better. I think the knee down, you're too out of the game. If the ball bounces, or even if you fumble the ball, you can't recover it. Just scoop it. Back yourself. 
So next up we have a hack from Dutch goalkeeper Andries Nopper. And in-game Nopper uses Vaseline to increase the grip on his gloves, but he has a pretty interesting way of applying it. So before each game, Nopper actually applies tons of Vaseline to his goalposts so he doesn't have to mess around with one of these containers, making it pretty easy for him to apply the Vaseline in-game. I think this one is pretty good. Next up are gripless goalkeeper gloves, and while these might seem a bit pointless, they actually require goalkeepers to focus a lot more on their catching technique. These gloves have a cloth grip, it means that basically they have no grip. They're very slippy and it's very hard to catch in them. That's the whole point. So we're just going to take a couple shots on Sean wearing the gripless gloves, and then we're going to see what he thinks. <laughs> slippy? <laughs> very slippy. <laughs> And after Sean tried them on, we could see just how tough it was for him to use them. And over time, these gloves would definitely help train your catching technique. These are definitely only for training, but when you are catching in them, you have to focus way more. But if you get a really nice catch, it feels amazing in these. So with the gripless gloves proving they require more focus, it means that over time, your catching technique will improve since there's nothing helping you except your own ability. So next up, we're going to be testing out which is the best pass for goalkeepers, throwing or kicking. But there's a catch. For a long time, it's been said that throwing the ball for keepers is more accurate, but kicking helps you get more distance. So for this test, Sean is going to be taking five throws from inside the box to see if he can reach me in this zone near the halfway line. Before we switch to kicks. First up, we have five throws. I love a good throw. And Sean's first throw reached me perfectly inside the zone. But this method wasn't flawless either. It's what we call bad. Sean's next two throws also reached me inside the zone. And so far, this method was reaching our expectations. Perfect. Okay, we're gonna put some pizzazz on this. And with Sean's final throw, we finished the test with four accurate throws out of five. All right, we did five throws, Sean, and they were pretty accurate, but they kind of fizzled out before they reached me. Let's see if kicking is any better. But straight away, kicking seemed to be a much quicker pass than throwing. That was spicy. It does get there a lot faster. It is definitely more risky, but if you can pull it off, worth the risk. <laughs> so while the kick method was more risky, it definitely reached me outfield a lot faster. But they were also harder to control. Ah, oh, my days! I rarely ever in my life save the best for last. It's usually gone downhill. Let's see, can we finish strong with this? So with Sean reaching me with four out of five kicks, this method was really effective. So while throws are slower and easier to control, kicks are much faster and would be effective for counter attacks. Okay, Sean, so we put the two different types of passes to the test. What did you think was best? It's gotta be kicking. If you can get a nice kick, it's so much quicker, it's just better. I mean, personally, I found the throws a lot easier to control, but I think they both have their place. Yeah, I would agree. I think they're both good. The next hack apparently makes diving for goalkeepers much easier, and it is these padded shorts. And unlike ordinary shorts, padded shorts come with built-in cushioning to help soften your dives. So after Sean tried them on, I took five penalties against him to test them out. Be like a cloud. It's very nice. Okay, Sean, so you tested out the padded shorts. What do you think? Yeah, I like them. They definitely help with landing and, you know, they're soft. So while some of the hacks we tested out today might help Sean become a better keeper, oh, they weren't gonna turn me into one anytime soon. But if you enjoyed this video, you might like this one too. See ya.